saw got my videos for NS Lizard and we're going now. Well, hello and welcome to the Tenet episode of our podcast. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about Tenet. Not a surprise. Uh, we all watched it for the first time, like last week or the week before for Cameron because he watched it before us. Uh, and we all have some opinions on it. We have some notes that we need to say. <laughs> I was very confused. Our opinions must be heard. Yes. <laughs> the people need to hear our opinions. I was very confused in general throughout the film. And I don't quite understand the rules. There's going to be spoilers on this. Yeah. Spoilers. Yeah, spoilers definitely. Definitely. Big spoiler alert. Definitely. If you haven't watched we... it, go home, yeah. watch it, don't, okay. come back. And yeah. We'll talk about it. Or you could just listen to us and we'll tell you the whole story. <laughs> we, we can probably tell the story better than the film. I think I probably could. You? I do not agree with that, Steve. <laughs> I reckon I could tell it better. Mm, no, I thought, I thought storytelling was fine. Oh. Um, so, there's like, some background. There's uh, some dudes. Yeah. And they discover that st- some stuff is moving backwards. And they're not sure why. And they realize that there's a guy moving stuff backwards because he's going to destroy the world. But he's doing so because he's going to die anyway. And he's jealous and wants the world to end if he can't live in it. Really, really weak villain justification. Yeah. With awful, awful performance from Kenneth Branagh affecting this wonky, nondescript Eastern European accent. Why does he always do accents? I don't know. And he's not very good at them. No. Just he's not a very good actor, in all honesty. He's... He's one of these people who's just been overly applauded by the theater crew. Like the, the best time he the best time he plays a character is when he's that really pompous, self-important version, but that's who he is as a person anyway. Mm. What you have to do is watch his Poirot films and realize he is an overinflated, egomaniacal. Ego and that's why he's so good in Harry Potter because that's exactly what he plays in Harry Potter. Yeah. I yeah. I well, I, th- I thought he was like I didn't have a massive problem oh. with him in general. Like, he was fine. I he was, he was the just sort of things. there. But casting wise, really? the worst thing of the whole film. I th- he was just sort of there. I wasn't I just, offended by him. I, I, I think he was quite weak as a villain as well. I, yeah. I felt. As a villain, yeah. His, yeah, his justification was just so. so it could poor. have been so much better. Yeah. There could have been so m- many other options. I feel like ev- one of the problems I have is that everyone's motivation in the film kind of didn't make sense yeah i don't know why anyone was doing anything uh, i know i think robert pattinson's character had the best motivations in that mm. he was but his motivations were coming from conversations he had had with uh denzel's kid later later on prior to the film yeah uh, po- after the film but prior to because timelines yeah. but at its core and like many nolan films it it's like he starts with what would be a cool kooky gimmick yeah that's gonna blow people away oh, now i have to actually write a film about this mm. now i actually have to come up with a story like i'm gonna do a film where people move closer to a black hole and time moves faster there so that they don't age kind of like planet of the apes and then everyone else ages now how do i write this film yeah yeah in stella he I goes mean, into the mental concept and yeah. then he's like oh i need inception to... is exactly that memento yeah. was exactly that um the only ones I think where he didn't do that were the Batman films. Mm, where yeah. he went in and went, I'm going to just, I'm actually going to tell a really good comic book story for one film and yeah. two very mediocre comic book films for the first and third one. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I just didn't, it seems like he was woke up from a dream yeah. and was like, oh, yeah. what if everyone was going backwards, but only sometimes and you could travel between it, but also you couldn't just travel between it. You had to like plan it in advance. Okay, now yeah. I'm gonna write a story. There was a, that, that whole thing as well, like um, you have to see yourself going into it for for it to work. Otherwise, you'll be ripped to pieces. Yeah. Yet, never once did that not pay off. No, like it, you know, Chekhov's gun. Where if you see a gun in Act One, someone needs to get shot in Act Two. Yeah. Mm. The, some, the moment they present this reality, whereby if you don't see yourself you die for the fact that none of the main characters or none of the villains no, then get ripped to pieces by it's it. never a problem. What yeah. was the point in bringing that up in the I first place? I feel like place? that's like 
a lot of the film. Yeah. Is they say something like, oh, this is how it works. And then you never touch it again. And you know what really annoyed me is um, like the first, when the protagonist first meets like the scientist where she has the wall that has loads of bullets yeah, in yeah. it. Mm. Uh, she's in Harry Potter as well. She's Fleur. Um, she's indeed. Oh, wow. There we go. So two Harry Potter people. And then at one point, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure... She, huh? More than two. We're Robert Batson, oh Cedric Diggory God, yeah. as well. <gasps> this is just a reunion. <laughs> about that. Well, they, um, Harry Potter is a who's who of classic English yeah. actors. Yeah. Oh, and then the scientist is like, the, the guy, Denzel's kid, is like, oh, so how does it work? And then she says, oh, don't worry about how it works. She says that like yeah. 40 minutes in. And from that point on, I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> What do you mean? I, I sort of need to know. Otherwise. Yeah, literally. My, I think one of my biggest pet peeves as well was when, when they fight the guys at the airport. Um, I, you see them fight and I, and I was like, one of the guys moving backwards and you never see his face. You don't see any of him. And I was like, what do you reckon? The ch- as soon as I, I said out loud to myself, what do you reckon the chances are that that's Robert Pattinson or Denzel's kid? Yeah. Like, John, David, David, mm-hmm. John, Washington. This- J D. Denzel's lad. JD. And um and I was like, what do you think the chances are that's one of them? It might be the two guys, oh it's both of them. Mm. And then one of them pulls the helmet off the other one, but you don't see his face. I was like, hundred percent. One hundred percent that's them. Yeah. And then I was like, Well, why would he let him go unless he already knows? Which means that maybe he had moved backwards to get to this point. And like that was I'm like half an hour in, and I'm like that actually makes sense. That mm. might be it. And then everything that happened fit into that. And I was like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. not like, oh, look at me. I'm so big brain. I figured it out. But I didn't even, I didn't even have to think about it that much. I was like, oh, yeah. well, what is this out? It's now, all the reveals and stuff didn't feel that impactful because they had to happen. I, um, I actually wrote down about that bit. I was like, uh, the, you know, he's got him pinned down. Oh, take the mask off. Yeah. Who, who are you? The miles, just take them out, and yeah. then um, later on, obviously, I did. I was thinking, I was like, well, it's got to be someone important or like one of them because he didn't take the mask off. And later on, I was like, yeah, yeah, literally, made yeah. sense. Yeah, I feel like it was trying to be like, oh, you didn't see this coming. It's really clever. But then, as soon as like the first bit when they're in the opera house in Ukraine, wherever they yeah. are, um, and then some guy like shoots a reverse bullet mm-hmm. like at the end, like straight away, I, I was thinking. Okay, yeah. that's that's, that's either the same guy or that's Robert Patterson's character. Yeah, come back and saved yourself. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I thought the same thing. Um, I just, it didn't, it made it presented itself as being this much more complicated thing and it wasn't. And then at its core, when you take all that complication away, it, it was James Bond. Mm. He goes to the thing, makes quirky quips with Michael Caine and he's like, um, oh, I still want my hot sauce. And then he's, he's like, oh, and then she's like, um, Brooks Brothers won't get you a good enough look around here when you're around real billionaires. Mm. And he's like, oh, I'm just trying to fit it. It's all, he's, he's too suave. He was too cool. It was just James Bond. Yeah. But it was like, we're going to do James Bond, but we're going to have this cool time travel twist in it. But the time travel twist wasn't clever enough or interesting enough to actually make it worthwhile outside yeah. in the plot. In the action itself, the time travel was wicked. Some yeah. really clever stunts in it. And there were lots of times I was watching it and I was like, I I don't know how they've done this. Mm. Is the, the the bit when there's the car going backwards and they're either side of it going forwards? Is the guy driving, is there just a stuntman driving that car backwards? But what I don't understand is that the weight transfer yeah. when it shifts lanes it's, was opposite. So I was like, I don't, this doesn't, so unless they built hydraulics into it to force like it, that, mm. that might be something they do. But I was sitting there like, any film that has stunts in it, and I sit there going, I don't know how they did that. I love those. Yeah, I'm, I'm staggered by a lot of the stunts in that. Yeah, I, I loved it at the end when like the the blue squad were like getting out of the mm-hmm. uh, yeah containers yeah. and they oh. were running backwards and everyone else running forwards. I was like, how? What? And <laughs> the, <laughs> how is this even happening? That right bit now? with the building, they destroyed the building, and then so you saw it rebuild at the bottom, and the top blew up, and then you saw it rebuild, and you saw it blow up at the bottom, and the top rebuild. Yeah. Was like, it was, yeah. and that was so clever, and it was so funny. Um, I, there was some really the action was when I was happiest in the mm. film. Yeah. However, much like Inception, the action is lots of punchy punchy, and they punch like James Bond films. And it's lots of foop, 
And it's that, it's, I was saying the other day, I was like, it sounds like they're punching a bag of potatoes in the Foley room. And it's like, you ever hear anyone get punched? It doesn't sound like punching a bag of potatoes. It's lots of, and it's like, I don't want to, <laughs> it was all very flat and there's lots of throws and rolling and it feels like a modern James Bond film. Yeah. And mm. uh, it was. Uh, if you d- the the time travel the, the the inverted thing whatever they called it reversing inverted inversion I think it was yeah it could have been replaced by any other slight gimmick yeah and the film would have probably worked just as well like I didn't yeah. see the point I also liked the mini heist film at the beginning I thought that was really cool when mm. they were going to crash the plane it was actually more interesting than a lot of heist films but at the same time like so many heist films it has these bizarre traps like oh and then there's 10 seconds until you can get out mm. but um and but then you get these checkpoint doors and i was like well why would you make it why would you make it difficult yet not impossible yeah mm. like why would you just not lock it all down i don't the whole art subplot bit i didn't really understand what was going on for a lot of it like when she did a fake for her husband but then he owns that airport business where they get stuff in so you don't have to pay a fee I don't. I didn't really see but how that made sense because the art was his hold on her. He was going to use. She tried to use it against him, mm. and he knew, and then was using it against her. Yeah. Kept it locked away in that place, safe, out of her reach. And when she tried to have it destroyed with the protagonist helping, he had already pulled the art out because obviously he had help from the future. He oh, was gonna happen. yeah, yeah. Reverse so man. he still had complete control over her. Oh, I did not get that. At all. It's kind of spelled out. Well, I I don't know. It might just be me. And she opens the thing. Yeah. Right there. That was it. No, I got got that bit and I was like, oh, he got a bit of art. I didn't link it together that they went in there to destroy the art because that's how... Well, it wasn't the only reason they went in there. It was Turnstile. That was just a little... Yeah. yeah. So are the Turnstiles the only way? I assume so. To invert? Yeah. Yeah. So you can't just be like, oh... No, I'm assuming yeah, that's, that's the whole so. point is that they have to find that turnstile. So they go backwards to save the girl. And then they're like, but how are you going to come forward again? And they're like, we know where there's a turnstile. So we need to get there. But I also don't know why they couldn't have just gone to where the one they just used was. Because yeah. that would surely still be there yeah. in a week's time, a week ago. But I don't, I don't know. There, there's a lot of these kind of films and they make you go, yeah, but it's better if you just don't think about it. Yeah. Um, I also don't like how much of it just followed the same um, narrative line as uh inception where we need to learn more about this let's go to india we get to india we're gonna filter everything to yellow because apparently india has a yellow sky and then we're gonna meet this one indian guy who's gonna give us the inside track Mm. and then we're gonna know everything and it was a little bit yeah i i I also just didn't really understand like the general rules like can you go into the inverted place and like because they're always like, oh, everything that happened has happened. Yeah. But then, like, at the end... But they were changing stuff. Yeah, I, I don't understand. So because they always change stuff. Could I go in there and, like, go backwards and change the future that I've already done that is how I got here? Yeah. like The whole time travel Time thing. travel paradoxes. And they even acknowledges that with that grandfather thing yeah. in the film, yet doesn't provide a solution for it. And then he's like, the, the answer is don't think about it. And it's like, well... Okay, but you made you made a thinking man's James Bond with the motto "Don't think about it." It was like, well, what was the point? Yeah, just sort of let it let it happen. I feel like we've been very negative. I want to talk about some positive stuff. I was going to say, I want to talk about things that I things that I liked for me. Top things. um, Hoyt Van Hoytama's cinematography remains unparalleled. He's so good with that IMAX camera and stuff. He he came on to Christopher Nolan's team to do Dunkirk because Wally Fister, I think his name is. Uh, he was his Nolan's usual guy and he went off to go do something else or I think he was just getting old I can't remember whatever reason he uh, went off to go do something else and then Hoyter came in for Dunkirk and Dunkirk for all its flaws is a film that looks incredible cinematographically um, and so yeah I love that the score as well again like it wasn't his usual thing I, I, I was certain it was a Hans Zimmer score because Hans Zimmer does everything Nolan does and again like it wasn't it was uh, Lewin Goranson and he knocked out of the park amazing music throughout um but yeah and i just thought those two things from a technical and then the other thing was like we said the stunts and the visual effects were just did they crash an actual plane yeah i really? I, I saw that I, I like when it was coming out i saw it and they actually like built a hangar 
and then actually crashed a plane into a hangar That's just to, so to get the actual. Just do thing. miniatures. Obviously, like yeah, but obviously like a shell of a plane or a building, whatever. But yeah, they they, they did it. They actually did it. Which, yeah, I mean... Just that would be so much money. Just yeah. build it in miniatures, the remote control one, like and just drive just, it. They give him so much money. So as soon as he was money. like, I'm going to do a time travel film, they were like, here's a billion pounds. You got a plane? Crashed a building? He's someone who yeah, kind of irritates me in that he's um, very much like, oh, practical will always be better than uh, virtual, and it's like digital, and it's like, well, no. It's about time and place and understanding. Yeah. And this, this is a whole conversation in yeah, itself. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, he's someone who he's like, I think he's just an old school guy. He's like, no, yeah, no, 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 so, no. Yeah. practical will always be better. Yeah. Even though if it sinks all of the money of my film into it. Yeah, you just do it. What's your positives then? Um, I really love the music. Yeah, I the think it's so cool. Um, the scenes, you know, that end big bit, you know, where they are, the blue and the red team. Mm. Yeah, I thought that was like, the best scene of the yeah, whole film. I love yeah, that. The whole fight. Um, and two really moments that I really loved uh, based solely on color palettes um, <laughs> was the first thing when they have dinner, the, the woman and uh, the protagonist, and on her side, she's in blue and also she's got blonde hair and the background's kind of like this golden blue mix. And it was just like a really nice, oh, that looks so lovely. Yeah. Um, and also uh, when he, when they go next to each other, you know, and he's sh- pretending, oh, he's not pretending, he's gonna shoot his wife. Uh, and they've got like blue on one side and mm-hmm. red on the other, oh, and yeah, it kind of yeah. crosses on his face and makes this purple. I thought that was like a really nice mm-hmm. color moment. I like the bit where he's like yelling backwards, and then you hear a recording yeah. forwards. I yeah. was like, that's cool. That's yeah. a, there's a neat trick there. Yeah, I thought that, that was a bit um, that confused me. The name, um, for the ne- like the film, uh, the, the name of the film, because I wanted to know whether it actually had a meaning and it does it's like the main principle of an organization yeah and i was like oh that's cool but also because obviously it's spelt right both ways it's like palindrome yeah and also i was like this isn't part of it but i thought this was cool obviously it's a 10 and then 10 the other way and they have 10 minutes red and blue team at the end uh, and i was like i don't know whether they knew that but oh, i thought that that's like trick. a nice little Ooh, ten, ten, yeah Thing in there, I feel like that wouldn't be an accident. I don't, I don't know, yeah, with, with him just, especially. I just noticed it and I was like, that's actually, I didn't think of that. Really cool. yeah, I don't think of that either. I, I, I did like the blue and red, uh, when they were, yeah, not the, not the ending when he was talking to him and he was threatening to reverse shoot his wife or yeah. whatever was going on. It's brutal, that as well. Yeah, the blue and red was so nice, but yeah. yeah, I, I think generally I was quite confused for a lot of the film, and then at the end, it sort of like did it all together. But like I, I didn't understand how she, big spoilers, how she killed her husband, but then s- dived off the boat, and then her past self saw her dive off the boat. Yeah. But then in the actual, f- in her future, he she goes back, alive. and he's still there. He's the one who shoots her. Yeah. So how is he now dead? I, like that's the thing. Like it's they. Because when he goes back in time, he's the one in the car. So he throws the um, the, the little widget thing mm. into the back seat of the car before he throws the briefcase over, right? Yeah. So he's there making that happen in the past. But like you say, how is that effect of the past happening? But the death of this guy isn't because then he wouldn't be there to shoot her later on. He mm. wouldn't be there to have the dinner. Like You're going back to a point prior to the film because she talks about it. It's like mm. that was when we were happiest or tried to be happiest but that's all beforehand and yet somehow all of the stuff that's happened afterwards he's now alive for but yet you were already there so why did you jump off the boat in the first version if you hadn't killed him did you just jump off the boat for banter Mm. like i don't yeah no 100 percent. it's that time travel thing that um time travel doesn't really work as a plot device because it doesn't you you can't change the stuff like the as a way i don't think, I think it's hard for people to establish the rules of time yeah, travel big time in fi- and especially because there's different rules between different films that you look at yeah and different concepts and it's hard for someone to establish a universe where that version of time travel has one set of rules yeah but it's also um a film is problem solving right there is mm. there's a threat we need to deal with it we time travel back we deal with it that now exists forever as the reality. 
So you either show the first um, iteration of it, the very first timeline when they first go back, but then if they've gone back, that will forever be the timeline. Yeah. So they will already be back there stopping the threat. So there is no threat ever. You, it, yeah, it's, it's fundamentally a, it's like a, a self thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's like a, keeps on going. Also, I don't, uh, at the end, so Robert Patterson's from the future. From the future, yeah. Mm. And then he dies in the battle when he goes back yeah, at the end. Yeah, like, oh, he's oh, the body on the I ground. Mm. Yeah, but then does that mean there's a younger Robert Patterson just around the world and then in five years' time he'll meet Denzel Washington's son? Yeah. And yeah, then yeah, this will yeah. happen again and then at some point he'll get sent back, die, but then in that reality he's just he's got yeah, like a weird no, loop it's, for it's, always, uh, always It's going. paradoxical and then that, and like I said earlier the answer is you don't think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, wh why make a film that's is that complicated and that thinking man's film you know if you're gonna make a film like that make John Wick mm. if you're gonna make a film with a plot yeah, I don't think about it or make it a comedy but it's a bit weird to have it there's this real kind of like we're gonna do this real science fiction thriller and then it's not it's you know yeah mm. also I think a lot of the a lot of the what's the word like the, a lot of the threat I just didn't care because yeah, it was, Robert it was Patterson knows that he's going to save the day because the younger him still got to grow up and then yeah, exactly. meet the protagonist. It, it, they're saving the future, but they got one of the characters who are from the future, so they don't need to save the future because they know that it they works out. Because like, yeah. everything that's happened, happened. So Only sometimes. <laughs> apparently, only sometimes. Only when, you know... It suits the the plot decides, yeah. yeah. It's very dare maybe say, it's maybe it was, like, more built out than this. And then he had to like cut loads of stuff, or maybe someone else got maybe. involved. But I just I feel like it's fe 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 feels like they just let him do what they want, and maybe he didn't. I also quite think, think about everything. I don't know if there's a director's cut. I don't think there is. I think there is which that makes me think this is the cut he's happy with. Because the film did ages ago. It came out mm. twenty. The film no, twenty twenty. It came out last year. Like it, they've had enough time to release a director's cut. Yeah. And yet, and then he's like, no, this is the version I'm. This is the version I wanted to tell. And it's like, well. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think if I, I enjoyed watching the film, yeah, no, yeah. like I it did. was, it was fun to watch. It, like you said, if you just don't really think about that's the problem. It, you just if you just, if you, yeah, if you just watch it, like oh, this is actually quite an interesting spy film. I like Robert Pattinson. Mm -hmm. Denzel Washington's son's a pretty good actor. Don't like I don't like Christopher Nolan's insistence on taking young or sort of English actors and going for this. And he's English, but it sounds like it feels like something Americans would do is having your English character call everyone darling yeah. and it's like stop and at one point he said blimey and I was blimey. like whoa yeah, it's like no, 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 no. <laughs> it feels <laughs> like English people written by people who aren't English and it's yeah. like but you, Chris you are English you're a little bit posh but like you don't you wouldn't talk like this so it's a no. bit weird same in um, Inception Tom Hardy goes you can't be afraid to dream a little bit bigger darling and it's like oof why yeah it's always very well pronounced yeah mm. So, well, I think s slightly camp, yeah, it's well campy, and it's Rob Patterson's kind of like, like campy private school it. kind of vibe. Yeah, and it's ugh. yeah, it's yeah. He just has the same character. I feel like Inception. I could explain to someone and be like, "Oh yeah, they they used to plant things in dreams, mm -hmm. uh, but now they're doing like they're trying to plant an idea instead of taking an idea." Yeah, trying to plant but, an idea in a dream that's within yeah, a dream kind yeah. of thing. And but I feel like this one. I I wouldn't know how to tell it to someone. I'd be like, oh, they're trying to save the world because someone's got a formula. Inception establishes pieces. better rules yeah. because it deals with something more ineffable mm. that you can't go, well, no, because in the dream, because it's a dream. Yeah. And we, know, we know very little about dreams anyway, and it's a much more intangible concept, whereas... When you go into a dream and you change something, cool, you change that person's mind. You go back in time and change something, you now no longer need to go back in time to change the thing that you changed when you went back in time. It's yeah, it, it's always going to present a more paradoxical yeah, uh, I, I just, idea. I just don't know how I would explain it. I didn't like Inception either. Um, I, I know. Also, the, the, whole, the whole formula thing, when they were getting those nine pieces of stuff that told them how to invert yeah. things... I, I just don't... I feel like there was two different things going on trying to tell me the same thing yeah. in the end. 
they didn't really explain how those nine pieces together would go through a certain pro like they kind of skipped over that they yeah. they hit a few key points but they never really explained it i think that's like uh, on the end when you know they split it up i thought but why don't you just try and destroy it why yeah. why are you splitting it up to hide it why can't you destroy it yeah it's but sealed all cast it into the fire <laughs> <laughs> but then obviously in the future they have the it. protagonist finds it puts it all together and figures out how to go back in time. So what was the point, not back in time, reversing go backwards, or yeah, invert, yeah. I don't fully... So if he's like 50 and he wants Is to he go back... age backwards? Does he have to stay in the inverted time for 25 years until he's now 25? I don't, I don't have an answer. So does Robert, did Robert Patterson... Let's just say Robert Patterson... Went back in years time. down the road. Yeah, he went back in time in 2050. Yeah, did, he live life, did he live in a life in a world going backwards for yeah. 10 years before he then found another inverter, spun himself back around again, then like three days later, he then meet in, meets yeah, him in I, India and goes, oh, hey, I'm new. It's not like we've been mates for years. Yeah, because it's not, he can't jump in the inverter and it's like, oh, I'm now in 2020. Yeah, it's it not mean, time it's, travel. No, it's exactly. He yeah. has to live in an inverted yeah. world for the time until he then meets the protagonist. But that could be so long. And we know yeah. it's about a time because he says at the end, like, oh, in 10 years we'll have an adventure together or something like that. Yeah. Literally. So he just like chilled. They know they're going to be spies together. Yeah. So it, it, did he just like I meditate for 10 that years? Ending well, as well, the three of them. And they walk away and he says, I think this is going to be the start of a wonderful friendship. Which is, I don't know if it's the last line of Casablanca. Oh, I haven't seen that. And it's the really mm. very end of Casablanca. They're walking down the runway and he goes, No, I believe this is going to be the start of a wonderful friendship or a beautiful friendship, whatever. And it's like, Oh, it's so. And then it, in big letters, in like handwritten letters, the end. And I half expected it to say the end at the begin at the end. And it was all very, it was all very crass. And that whole bit of the three of them standing there and the Ives guy is like, I'm going to take these and I'm going to kill you. And they go, why don't we take one each? Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> like yeah. it was he was so easily sold on not yeah. killing them. And I know that they were like relatively friends, but he was like he was also a pretty one-dimensional dude. That he was just the the burly SAS kind of guy yeah. who showed up and took no nonsense and was like, I'm ready to die for this. Well, so they kept on saying the word temporal. Temporal? Yeah. Temporal pincer movement. Yeah. They just said it loads. I don't, know, I don't really know what that means. So as in, like, a pencil movement, you come from two sides at once, so yeah. they're coming from two timelines at once, but right? I, but but it doesn't not... quite, yeah. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the film, they just, like, lobbed a lot of words in. Yeah. Like, oh, this they is, love the this word is entropy tiny. as well. It's yeah. reversed. It's entropy. Okay. Yeah, it's like, I don't understand how that works. Cool. Also, I couldn't really hear a lot of the stuff going on. Yeah, that's been a, pr a problem a lot of people had. I watch everything with subtitles on, so I just put the subtitles on. Yeah, I, I, I thought but I don't want to watch it with subtitles because it's the first time I'm watching it. I just want to like experience it. Sure. But so much throughout it, a lot of people have said the dialogue is just inaudible for a lot of it. I had to properly like turn up, lean in, yeah. and then it would be massively loud when a plane crashes through a hangar, and I'd be like, ironically, with the subtitles uh, at the beginning when they speak Russian or Ukrainian. Uh, it, there's, that comes up as a hard sub and then the Amazon Prime subtitles come up saying speaking Ukrainian I'm like move I can't see what they're saying I don't speak Ukrainian so how am I supposed to know I think the intro to the film was quite nice like the the, the play and the people breaking in I was exact, no but it was identical but to the explosions and stuff at um when Bane shows up at the football stadium oh, it yeah. was shot for shot the same the shot around the back of the um uh, the box mm. is the exact same shot that he used in Dark Knight Rises. As soon as I watched it, I was like, am I watching TDKR? Like, what is this? Like, I don't... Yeah. Also, when when he's... When he gets on the boat, when he, like, takes the pill to kill himself at the start, yeah. and they're like, ha, no, it doesn't work. This was, this was a test. Well done. You passed a test to, like, kill yourself. Um, and then he's on the boat, and then that guy shows up who's like, I have an action... Ten it, and then you never see that man again. Well, yeah. he's he's a CIA person. Like, yeah, but, or whatever. but he, like, he knows about it. He works for the wider organization. Yeah, yeah, but he knows about it. He got sent on the mission. Is he from the future? Does he already know the protagonist in the future? I think you're not supposed to know any of that. I think that's yeah. supposed to just be uh, the idea is that it's for him. It's out. Of, he's blind going into it. It's all out of his control. There is a wider um, conspiracy of people 
planning the defense of the world, kind of like the Avengers, but without the costumes. They're just quiet, much quieter. They're just there working in the shadows, which I think is, you know, that's an overdone spy idea that like James Bond and his pals are quietly working in the shadows to protect all of mankind. You know, that's yeah. happens all the time. Yeah, I, yeah, I just, I, I didn't, I didn't love the film. There's um, this thing at the end that I noticed, like kind of like that was um, uh, the protagonist. Obviously, he a lot of the things he says, things he's heard from other people, mm. and I was like, and then he starts saying them, and I was like, but maybe if he's gone back and obviously recruited like Rob Pattinson, he told him that, and then he told him, and like yeah. maybe that's yeah. how it keeps like all of these things, like what's happened has happened, like you know all that stuff. Yeah, maybe that's why he repeats everyone. It, yeah. it depends how you think about it. Because if you think about it like that, you're like, oh, that's actually pretty smart. Yeah, no, I, mean, I thought that same thing in the end. And I was like, right. yeah, he does that. When he spoke to the uh, Indian lady, he repeats to her stuff that she's already said to him earlier. Mm. But mm. Um, sort of prior to their conversations kind of thing. And it's like, or not prior, but like suddenly she's, he, he now knows way more. So, yeah. it's. Yeah, I d also, I didn't understand... I like the very end after the boat bit and after the the bad guy's been shot and slid off the side of a boat or whatever happens. Uh, and he gives her a phone. He's like, oh, call this number if you're ever in trouble. And then she calls, she him, calls him. And then he's already there. Turn already up. there. So is he just been living I in the inverted? He's gone back. Yeah, to that I assume moment. he's already gone back yeah. to that moment. So she's ah, called him for. Right. She's p potentially been killed. And he's gone back and prevented that. Yeah, I think but you just don't see the forward part because it's supposed yeah. to be like going forward. He now has this capability. Yeah. He's now a Superman, so he can jump back and forth around time. But then when he goes back, does he? I don't. Know, I, does I, he have to I stay there at the end of the years? film? It's now in his hands to maintain this loop yeah. that they've kind of. Created. I think the, the idea is that the yeah. So I think the idea is that the person. I think that the guy on the boat. Um, has been talked because they talk about him as the protagonist. Mm. I think the guy running the whole tenant group is him, yeah. And he sent that guy back to, or or he sent people back to tell him. So this guy doesn't even realize that he's speaking to the guy who's running the organization, but is running it thirty years ahead of time yeah. backwards. Mm. This guy is so at, like you say, it's sort of um, he might be like CIA or something, but they only get. He's like, is all I know is a word and a symbol. It's all they tell me, mm. and like. He's such a sort of, sort of tiny network of organize of disorganization yeah. that he doesn't get that knowledge. But actually, it's all being set up by Denzel's kid. I think that's the mm. idea. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, and they leave it quite open ended mm. for you to sort of decide yeah, what you yeah, want, you sort of think about what you want. But at the same time, I still think the core issue with it is that there's just basic time travel paradoxes that don't mm. make sense. Yeah, and like you said, they call one out and then and then they yeah. fall for do it. it. Yeah, S loads of times. Like the whole, yeah, the whole going reverse, stopping this from happening, and then, but then if you had to stop it, why would you then be there? Why would you be there to, to go do back? it in the first place? Yeah. Also, I, th I really struggled to, I didn't actually like anyone in the film. I, like like I thought, yeah, Robert Patterson, great, like but really? I think I just like him in general. I do too. Um, and, but then the wife, when she got I shot inverted, I was like, well, I didn't believe whatever. the love interest between him and her either. No. Not between Kenneth Branagh and her, obviously, but like, he also didn't really care about her. He was like, if I can't have you, no one can. I'm also going to shoot you. Yeah. It's like, well, you're like, you're not losing her. You could have just left with her, but you, it, 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 the, the jealous boyfriend, the jealous husband thing just felt so forced. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like it matched his character. Yeah. And he also just happened to be from a secret place in Ukraine where they dug up, in Russia where yeah. they dug up uh, nuclear material. I was like, yeah. okay. Some guy, Chris Nolan clearly just watched Chernobyl and was yeah. like, I want a lot of this imagery oh, in it. It'll really fit. It'll look wicked. And I was like, well. But then also, when he found the gold in the, the site when yeah. he was young, was that sent back specifically so he could find well, it. Well, because at, at the top there's a there's a letter yeah, with his name on it. His so name. I believe that yeah. That but then who yeah. did the protagonist send that back to keep no, the no, ball in motion? No, no, he sent it back to himself, surely, yeah. to give him the. Oh, yeah, but then how could he have sent it back to himself if he never got sent it in the first place? And it's again yeah. same thing because that's that gold from the. Um, Full of the. 
the Norsk thing, the Norsk freight thing as well, as all that gold there. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, so oh, yeah. It'll be coming from there. But yeah, it's all a bit. Yeah, and then he beats a guy to death with a gold bar. It's cause brutal. Because he, he stole one. It was so brutal. And then yeah. he gives it to him. Yeah. It's just, oh, it's, it's just. I liked the film watching it. I thought it was fun. I actually, yeah, yeah like for, for all its flaws, I did enjoy it. In the same way, like, I enjoyed No, Tum to, no Time to Die. Mm. I sat there, I watched that film, I was racked with issues. Yeah. But overall, I thought it was fun and it was a sort of action romp start to end. What annoys me about it is that Nolan has built this reputation as being a real kind of thinking man's filmmaker. Mm. Kind of like Fincher in a way, but Fincher's just way better at executing because he doesn't overshoot the gimmick. Um, and I think that his desperate want to make the great British spy film. Uh, he did the great British war film in Dunkirk, which was rubbish. It was He sat down and went, I'm going to make a war film that has no story and no interesting characters with no personality. It'll be a real gritty insight. And it's like, well, no, this is rubbish. And then he did... The only thing he's nailed is the superhero film thing. Mm, yeah, he did, yeah. And uh, the prestige. Prestige rules. I've not seen that. Oh, it's on my... This it's his. It's his best one, in my opinion. It's far and away. David Bowie's in it. The enough. magician thing. Yeah, uh, it's Hugh Jackman, Batman yeah. and Wolverine. Yeah, and they're like it's Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman, and they're like competing magicians. It's got loads of superhero people in it, like um, Michael Caine's in it. Uh, Why is he everywhere? He's in every. Uh, he was no so legit. irrelevant in Tenet. So, but uh, but um, no one loves him. Yeah, and then who's a uh, uh, who plays Black Widow? Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. She's uh, she's in it as well. Um, in the Prestige. Oh, she's in the Prestige. So there's like a lot of talking about Tenet again. No, no, no. Um, I didn't see that. And then there's a weird team of David Bowie and uh, Andy Serkis who are Nikola Tesla and his. It's a, it's a bit odd. It's wonky, but it's it has a really big twist at the end, which I won't spoil. But like you keep constantly going, no, this person's the top, no, this person's top, no, this person, and they constantly one upping each other, which matches the narrative of the film, but also fits the rhythm. Of it. it's, mm. it's great. I think it's his best one. So there's better Nolan films. Is this the than, best Nolan film? Tenet. Yeah, I, I just feel like he, he looks at his past films like, oh, okay, I did Inception, pretty trippy. Uh, I did Interstellar. Yeah, that was also quite. So he was like, I did Dreams. I've done Black Hole Time. Yeah. I've done um, Concurrent Time. So the idea of like, yeah. was it one day, one week, one month? Yeah. Well, one one hour, one day, one week, which is what um, Dunkirk is. Mm. Running all those time periods concurrently, yeah, yeah. and now I'm gonna do reverse time. Reverse. I feel time, like he's yeah. maybe just trying to like one up himself every film. He's, he's just like, really oh, into. Whoa, whoa. And I think I uh, might be wrong, but I think Interstellar was written by his brother, so I think this one might have been as well. Um, I have to check that, but uh, I think his brother writes a lot of the screenplays oh, with okay. him, and I think they're just kind of yeah, they're just kind of really into patting themselves on the back. And going, hey, dude, you know what would be crazy this time? time went sideways and it's like shut up just yeah. f- come up with characters and plot before you come up with dumb gimmick yeah and it's so evident that you don't care about the characters oh, no. and the plot and the naff like the bit at the end of uh interstellar where he's in the space bookcase yeah pulling threads i don't yeah what that, that, yeah i don't know what i, I think it does. It's all just about lacking basic rules, really. Yeah, that's but the key ba- issue. Like we're we're missing some key information on the rules of time travel, the rules of uh, can't remember what else that we said. Some, um, oh, the like algorithm and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those yeah. are the key things that we need to know to understand what the stakes are, how important it is. The thing about being ripped to shreds and then and then never you know, executed. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, you know the. That's why it becomes like a, but why what, should what I we, care? We, we, yeah. We're missing all the stakes. We're, yeah. we're not invested enough because the stakes aren't high enough. But yeah, then maybe that. that's what he wanted. Maybe he went into it thinking, I want you to be as confused as the protagonist, like go through the journey together. But by the end but of it, by the end of it, the protagonist knows it all yeah. and now is in charge and he's the you know he's the big cheese. Yeah. Whereas we're still sitting there going, but that didn't make any sense to begin with. Yeah, mm. Like it, you've broken a bunch. It's also this desperate clinging to realism thing that you're then breaking the rules in a way that you we read films that feel ultra realistic as though they will apply the world's rules. And then if you introduce something that's going to break those rules, you need to be very clear on how it's going to break those rules. 
Whereas if you watch something that's like super stylish, like super out there, and then very quickly you go, and then here's this thing that breaks normal world rules, not really going to explain any of it. You're like, yeah, right. Like Sucker Punch, for example, is a film that like doesn't really establish its own rules. I know you don't like it. What I'm saying is like it doesn't establish its rules because no. it doesn't need to. Yeah. It's so out there anyway, it all kind of fits thematically. Whereas if halfway through James Bond, if he got shot in the arm and then just re regen like Wolverine does and spat the bullet out, you'd be like, oh, excuse me? Yeah, what? <laughs> Where does this come from? But it yeah. would be like, but if they gave him a serum that let him do that earlier on, but if it wears off within 24 hours, like, it's basic rule building. Yeah. The, it feels like there was a missing story mm. within this story. There's just some missing narrative prompts yeah. as well. There was a lot mm. in it. That just, there were too many stories in it that didn't matter and not enough of the story that did. Yeah. Yeah. He, he kind of got distracted with uh, how this is all going to fit together. Yeah. Mm. And then everything around it it was just like kind of ballooned out of control this yeah. th this my concept doesn't matter anymore yeah i want this tiny bit in the middle for you to be like oh yeah cool oh good job chris you're a good director i was just i was just generally very confused it's just just a bit disappointed more than anything else yeah. i mean i'm not nolan's biggest fan if you couldn't guess but like i but time and time again i get really excited by the premise Mm. And time and time again, I get disappointed by the execution. Yeah, and I think a lot of people will do this thing where they go, "Oh, we gotta appreciate the appreciate the premise." So it's good. It's a good idea. It's like maybe I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It's the only one who does it and he doesn't execute on it very well. So maybe not. Yeah, maybe a good idea is not really good enough to. A good idea, make not a, a good film. film. Make, you yeah, know? yeah, like w whatever you just said. <laughs> yeah. the, like the idea, like oh, reverse time, cool. But then cool you have to actually do something. Like Terminator, I don't think they came up with time travel first. No. I think they came up with there's a war in the future that they need to prevent now yeah. and then time travel came around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, well, how about actually, it's, it's built on the premise of if you could go back and kill Hitler, would mm -hmm. you kind of think like, oh, you would. But like it's, we're going to go back and kill the person who starts it all or they're going to go back and kill the person who stops it, right? Mm -hmm. So they go back to kill John Connor and well, then kill Sarah Connor, right? But it's that's a film that's a time travel film, but doesn't ever feel like it's breaking the rules. No, mm. it does a little bit, but it doesn't. It doesn't try and be complicated enough to force it to. No. But then, if you ever watch Terminator Genesis, yeah, that's a film where he goes back in time, but the future that he left is not the past that he enters. And it's the more films they made of those, it's the more the, muddled it. Yeah, it got blurred. Uh, but the good thing about Terminator is that they well, up until sort of genesis up to three uh, really they yeah but like they kept they kept one time loop yeah. really which is they send someone back to kill her he sends uh reese oh right carl reese carl reese back to save his mom they love each other they have him the loop continues yeah and they kept with that until genesis and that's when they started to change it but yeah. that's why it didn't necessarily feel like they were breaking any mm -hmm. rules because they kind of stayed consistent yeah I, th I think that's maybe the biggest problem with Tenet is the consistency of what he's trying to say what, what changes what changes when you go back and what doesn't mm. what's allowed like, I, I think the biggest example is why does she jump off why does she see herself jump off the boat if he doesn't die yeah does mm. she just jump off the boat because she's mad that's what she says yeah. and then but just that, get back on the boat but then she sees herself jump off the boat having killed him yeah so it's, then it's like well why did you jump off the yeah. yeah, it's like he tried to do a time loop thing when the film's not really about time travel. Yeah, it's, I think you got too yeah. confused. Yeah, about it's, it all. it's sort of like a muddled idea. Do you know what? I think it's actually a better execution of a similar premise, which is a much weaker film as far as, far as filmmaking is concerned, but as a storytelling as its premise and its rules go, way better is Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise oh, like and that. Emily yeah. Blunt. It's a way clumsier, mm. way sort of more infantile film, yet they never break the rules. He dies, he wakes up, he remembers. Mm. Simple. Yeah. And it's and that sort of try it again, try it again, try it again. Like live die repeat is really fun and yeah. it works. It's actually I think it's someone said to me, what would you rather watch? Tanner or uh Ed, um what did I say it's called? Edge of Tomorrow, Edge of tomorrow. I completely forgot what it's called. Yeah, I think um, they did rename it though. 
Did they? To, to something like live, die, repeat or I something. I think that was the tagline. Oh, I thought, yeah, yeah, I thought that was the slogan they were using. Oh, because when I went to watch it on something else, it said live, die, repeat. Oh, oh really? mental. Um, but yeah, either way, like, um, I would rather watch Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow has a terrible ending. Yeah. But outside of that, like, it's, it's got some really cool parts in it. Yeah, it's got I, some really cool parts in it. I I actually really enjoy that film. Yeah, like, me yeah, too. The, yeah. the ending. Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, Edge of Tomorrow. Like, the obviously the ending is not great but then like the whole montage of him just like learning how to be a better artist yeah and, and it's it's much lighter it. as yeah. a film but it is it is really good it is really it's a really interesting concept mm. and then also if you play video games it suddenly feels very familiar yeah. as well and in, in a cool way yeah I, yeah i just think right well we've gone on for a while yeah, let's yeah. do like final verdicts do you want to do a rating out of 10 or do you give it a rating like, yeah i can do a rating out of 10 all right, go on, and you go first. Um, and a little summary. Yeah, I just thought, uh, incredible soundtrack, incredible um, visuals, both from a cinematographic perspective and from a um, visual effects perspective. Blown away by some of the stunts and how clever some of the filmmaking was in it. The actual physical filmmaking really sounds like just sounding like, I don't, I don't know how you've done this. You filmed people in the same shot and half of them going backwards and half of them going forwards. So half of them on a green screen that you've been played back, I'd, and there's a lot of it with shaky cam as well. So then, like, you're are you programming in the shaky cam onto a thing, but let down by weak characters, boring narrative, or un, un, uninspired, predictable narrative mm. that doesn't even make a lot of sense anyway. And one of the worst villain performances I've seen in a while. <laughs> um, just thought it was rubbish. Uh, so I give it a six. Six. <laughs> that sounded so negative, and then it's. No, I think yeah, they crashed a bum and plane. Yeah, it's so good. That was so cool. Oh, yeah, and like, okay. and and in spite of all that, like I said, it's still fun. It's yeah, still it as a, good. It's a fun film. It's still as good as the Daniel Craig James Bond films are. Mm. So it, but it doesn't ever. It never seems. It should be better, and it fails to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, visuals, stunts, yeah. that end scene mm. with the people running backwards and people running. So good. Yeah. Um, those little color palette moments, obviously, <laughs> I loved those. Uh, sound uh, soundtrack, yes, yeah, so amazing. I think as well. I was gonna say, sorry, I forgot, but like it actually sounds like you know when you imagine what reversed sound sounds like. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, it's insane mm. how they captured what I thought reverse would sound like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, there are lots of problems with the time travel aspect. Some of the characters are just so... One-dimensional. Yeah, I just, I don't care about them enough. Yeah. I, I didn't feel the stakes were high enough. But I, I was going to say a six as well. Oh, okay. Oh. Because well, I like, overall, I actually did enjoy yeah. watching it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, I, I think I'll go for a, a solid five. Sure. I just want to be yeah, different. It's, it's, I think that sort of four to six range is like average. Yeah, I think everything that you guys said is like it's a fun film. I I had fun watching yeah, it. Yeah, me too. And that's sometimes what cinema's about in general. Mm. I had a good time. Couldn't hear much of what they were saying in general, which really did annoy me. Yeah, because uh, I, I don't have like great ears or anything, but I was struggling. A There's lot. a really cool thing you can put on your screen though that tells you what they're saying. Well, yeah, but I'm also not good at reading. Oh yeah. So double whammy. Um, and then, yeah, the time travel, the paradox that they mentioned, and then just did anyway. Um, I honestly didn't really notice much of the soundtrack. And oh that really? might have been just because I was trying to listen to what they were saying constantly, because sure. I, had, I had no idea. When he was speaking to the Indian lady at the top of the tower, I couldn't hear any of it. Really? Like, I, I actually couldn't hear much of it. And maybe it's just a me thing, but I, I couldn't hear much. I don't remember not being able to hear it, but then like I could hear the the sounds, and I had subtitles on. So my brain, yeah. if, if, even if I couldn't, my brain was piecing it together yeah. throughout. So I, I didn't. just I just really struggled to hear it, and I think, like you said, the characters, I didn't care. Yeah, I think neither. him not having a name is an interesting thing to do, but also made it a bit worse for me. Well, because so also like, it undermines it all. it all that if they suddenly go. Oh, you're John Adams. Oh, it's a weird coincidence. The guy who set this whole thing up yeah. was called John Adams. Yeah, it's just that was like... mental. Oh, how do we get rid that of this sense, little yeah. loophole or plot hole that's in our we're film? The, the oh, we just never say his name, ever. Yeah, He's just the protagonist that someone mentions once and then that's what he goes as now. He calls, and he calls himself the protagonist. Yeah. 
I just he was uh, he wasn't likable either. He was a little bit too cocky to be. Yeah, I didn't like it. Like either. A, but I wonder. I wonder if Nolan sat down to make an actual just straight edge spy thriller. Hmm. Would it be much better? And I think it probably would be. Probably because he he shoots himself in the foot with these gimmicks. And I think it gets in the way of the fact that he's actually a really competent, really talented filmmaker. Mm. Competent sounds like an insult, but I mean it in a way that he really knows how to how to generate great cinema. And I think that he's re- he's harpooning himself with these. Oh no, I need I need a film that's you know a spy stopping a world threat isn't enough. And it's like, well, maybe it is. Yeah, maybe you that is enough. You know, add just ridiculous stuff in there just to make it seem like oh this is yeah. this is a different type of film yeah. I was just in general I was quite confused and then, I was quite underwhelmed yeah alright that's a word underwhelmed confused shrug shrug Sh- yeah. shrug sums it up actually really well yeah big it time. was just a shrug if this was 2010 I would say meh meh yeah. meh as well yes we're old Thanks dash for watching. Dash. Yeah, thanks for watching the Tenet podcast. Um, you know, if you watch this, then you've probably seen the film. But if not, go watch it. It's fun. Um, it's a good time. Just make sure you have subtitles or turn the volume <laughs> yeah, up. Turn the subtitles on. Yeah, and make sure you can read because I'm not great at it. Yeah. Uh, you know, share this around if you want to. You can comment, tell us what you think of the film. You might have loved it. Um, I don't know anyone who did love it. Yeah, I, I don't think, think everyone I thinks either. it's okay. The only thing I have heard is that apparently it is much better on a second viewing. So maybe we all maybe need we'll to, have to watch in a year's it again. time. We'll come back with another episode. We'll do Tenet two. I feel like I did want to watch it again after I watched it. I, th- I was like, oh, I, I, I don't think I, think I did because I feel like I figured it out really quite early. Oh. So I was going into it not like, oh, this is a big reveal. I was like, yeah, this this is what I thought was going to happen. Then maybe the second time you can be like, right, I can push all this stuff away. Just maybe it won't yeah. annoy me as much this time. Also, I want to listen to the soundtrack, and also I want to hear what they're saying. Yeah because it was basically a silent film for me. Uh, Yeah, share this around, and we'll be back next week with uh, another episode. Uh, Thanks for watching.